Hey everybody, welcome to the garden. I hope you're having a great day. Shout out to the lemon and lime lovers and everybody in between. It's time for the third episode in the small account challenge. Okay, so uh, we're going to get into all the data, all the details. Uh, as you can see, I'm in a position right now. But before we do, I do want to highlight a couple things about the platform. So as I've been trading on this platform for the small account challenge, I've, I've also been exploring it quite a bit. So coming to this tab up here, you'll see the preference tab. So what's really cool about this tab is you can start really tailoring the platform to what you like. Um, and it offers some unique things that you don't really find commonly in, uh, in a lot of other crypto futures platforms, at least not that I've come across. So on to the more basic stuff that I've seen, you can actually, uh, you know, kind of customize the layout settings. So if you like the pro look, which is what you see on my screen, you can keep that or you can go to this horizontal look, um, which, you know, it's, it's, it's similar to the pro look, but it's slightly different. Uh, you'll have uh, a bit more, everything a bit more boxed up. Whereas in the pro look, everything's, a, you know, you have a couple boxes here, but on the right side, it's a little bit more of a flow. Uh, I like that look more. Um, and you can also customize your theme settings. Like if you like the light and day, you know, the very bright, ooh, sorry for your eyes. Or if you like the dark night, which I like the night look, it's a little easier on the eyes. Um, and uh, I think I'm going to keep it that way. And then you can also control how your uh, your candles look to a, to a point, right? So you can have it where it's, you know, red and blue. Uh, blue down, red up, or vice versa. You know, have the standard green up and, and, and red up, you know, whatever you want. I'm going to keep it standard, but you can mess around with this quite a bit. And then also, you also have here uh, the order confirmation window. So that by default is actually on. Um, that's really good to have, especially as you're learning the platform. So essentially all it is, it's, well, you know, when you initiate an order, the confirmation window will come up and say, are you sure? Is this, this order look correct? It gives you a second chance to pretty much, <clears throat> you know, make sure your order is correct before you go into the position. Um, but you know, once you get used to the, to the, the, the platform and, and hopefully you are, uh, already being very cautious on when you enter a position that you have everything correct, uh, that you don't need a confirmation window, you can disable this. That way, when you press the button to jump in, uh, you you jump in when you press it, right? And then, obviously, the advanced uh, take profit stop loss. So, essentially, <clears throat> that's just giving you more uh, ability to have uh, more detailed information on, like, how to, uh, you know, place your stop loss and take profit. That's pretty common as well. And what I really want to talk about, too, is two things. So, you, you can actually customize your... Uh, you can customize your your time zone. Uh, I'm not sure how common this is on uh, on other futures platforms. I would love to hear that. Tell me uh, in the comment section if you've come across this on other futures platforms. I would imagine you would, but for some reason I've never really noticed it. Um, so you could have the 24 hour clock, which is what I'm used to. I'm used to having the 24 hour clock on all the other futures platforms I've ever used in crypto. But this one also allows you to pretty much customize it based off of your UTC time zone. So whatever your time zone is, you can place it here and uh, yeah, you're good to go. So you, don't, you have the choice 24 hours or your time zone, which I think is very nice. And here's another uh, option, another tool that's not as common uh, in crypto uh, futures platforms, at least from what I've seen. Uh, you have the ability to change your position mode. So you can either be a hedge mode, which is what I'm at right now, or you can be in one way mode, which is this is the common way, right? The one way mode is far more standard, at least in my experience. And essentially what it means is, you know, if you're going long Ethereum and you're using one way mode, you can't go short Ethereum until your long is closed. Whereas hedge mode, you can be long and short on the same asset at the same time. But what's also cool about hedge mode is it also separates your order positions. So if you have a bunch of limit orders priced, uh, you know, uh, you know, let's say buy orders priced at different levels. So let's say I had a, a buy area where I want to buy at 1272, then I have one where I want to buy at 1265, then I have one I want to buy at 1250. Uh, in hedge mode, you'll have, it'll give you the average entry combining all of those, of those orders into one, but you have the ability, here I'll show you here, you have the ability to give each lot, so each order, its own separate TPSL. Okay, so in my case, I have two different orders, but I'm giving them the same TPSL. I could change that if I wanted. So actually, let's do that. So instead, 
of uh, 12, 20, 37. Let's do, um, let's do 12, 40. And then instead of 12, 72, we'll do 12, 80. So let's uh, see how this looks on the chart here. So one of my orders is my original where it's just 1272.30 for my TP, or 1220.37, sorry, 1220.37 for my TP, and then 1272.20 for my stop loss. And then the new updated one is now 1240 TP, 1280 stop loss. And we can actually see it on the chart here. So here's the average entry of my position, and then here are my two stop losses, and then here are my two TPs, right? So. I think that's actually really cool. It's very similar to how a lot of Forex platforms work. I believe pretty much all of them because everything's separated in lots and Forex. So that's how that tends to work, uh, at least in my experience. So I have not come across this in crypto uh, until now. Now, I don't know if other platforms do this, but I'm happy to say MEXC does. And I think this is a, it's a very, very nice um, tool. Uh, in my opinion, and uh, it's a great way to average out of uh, out of positions and, and such. And also, if you like uh, to be a hedger, right? So if you like to, you know, hedge long and short, and then try and hold both positions until the winning side is uh, is you know kind of shown, uh, and then you let go of the loser and ride the winner, you're good to go, right? This is the way to do it. <clears throat> so you know. There you go. So there's a couple of new things I've been discovering and uh, shared with you this time around. Now, let's get into the update of uh, the trades, right? So I'm currently in a short right now. Um, and uh, so far, so good. I do have a target uh, level here of 12, 20, 37. Now, I don't know if I'm going to hold it all the way down to there. Uh, I've been watching price. I've been I've been short since right around this area here. I've been watching price quite closely, you know, since I've woken up and, you know, gotten a chance to kind of look at the chart here for Ethereum on, on the 15 minute. Um, this level here is pretty interesting. I, I, I do want to watch to see how the next, I would say, hour or so plays out because I'm watching this hourly candle as well. Uh, it does give me some bullish some bullish tendencies here now i'm not super bullish on ethereum again i'm looking just on the hourly time frame as my as my master time frame as the one that's making my decisions so i'm not looking at the daily or the four hour that those those are probably telling me different stories but on the hourly potentially i'm seeing a pop coming in to this lower fair value gap um unless we can actually start trading under 1254.10 within an hour or so uh, then I'll be a little bit more confident that we're going to come back and fill out this lower fair value gap here and probably grab the liquidity under this level here. And that's why I have this target right here, because ideally you would have price come down, take out the liquidity under this low, this low pivot, which would most likely fill out this very large imbalance, which is also a large fair value gap here. So that's why I have this this target level right here. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, that's my thinking. But I am not, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, against the idea of closing out early if I start seeing, you know, major strength. Because if I see major strength, I'm still going to have a short bias on it um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, you know, going back to the hourly chart real quick. We broke structure here, okay? Then we popped up, and it was very interesting watching this pop up. Uh, couldn't actually break these high wicks, and the denial has been very, very very clear um, and if we do have a pop-up I'm just looking for another high uh, lower high um, potentially potentially we, we, we trade back all the way up towards here and then we just go into a much larger uh, sideways move like a, lar a larger or larger range I don't see much here to tell me that we're gonna see major upside you know beyond this point 1305 you know 1310 ish uh, we may, of course we may, it's all probabilities, but as of right now, the price action isn't telling me that, but I am getting some inkling that we may see a move back towards the 1270s and 1280s and maybe even, you know, touching around the 1300 level. So I wouldn't be uh, against closing out the short if I start seeing strength and then building out another short position as we come up higher to fill out these larger bearish fair value gaps. Now let's get into the positions that I end up closing. So quick uh, tab here in position history. So what's really cool, again, you get you get the history of the position. So let's see. So here's the dates of everything. So these this was the first trade I took. And then this was the, so this was actually the trade I highlighted in the episode you'll probably be seeing later today. 
Uh, so, or, or maybe the day before, sorry, the time is all jumbled for me, uh, but essentially had a great trade here. And then uh, after that trade, uh, just a little bit after that trade, um, I saw another position that I ended up going short there and it, uh, it, it was a pretty good, it was a pretty good short. It was only one order was filled. So I only had about like a 12, a, I want to say like a $12 position on 10 X was filled, uh, made 10% off of that. So that ended up being about a dollar 21. So, you know, Yes, the P and is very low because we're using such a small position. But when you start with small accounts, my advice to everyone is don't really focus on the dollar amount because you're not trading for. I mean, you shouldn't be trading for profit. Um, you, to, to try and trade for profit with a small account is honestly, I think it's just a road to ruin. You need to be trading for growth and sustainability. So what you want to do is focus on the percentages, not the dollar amounts made. If you focus on the percentages, uh, it, it brings into context how good the trading is. If you focus on making $1 off $100, it's going to feel really bad, okay? Uh, especially if you're watching other people trading bigger sizes. So <clears throat> you want to make sure it's much better to feel like, ooh, I made... I made you know five dollars off a hundred dollars. That's five percent. That's actually a really good job. That's a really good job to do that in one trade, um, especially if you're doing that. And then you have you know two or three other one percent trades in the day. That's a great day. You, you made seven to eight percent. You you should be really proud of yourself, especially if you're going to consider you know continue to do that. And if you continue to do that sort of trajectory, um, you know that small account which was a hundred bucks. You know, you just say you're doing five, eight dollars, you know, every day or every other day. By the end of the month, you're probably looking at a hundred dollars plus in profit, right? So you have to keep that sort of mentality. And the best way to do that is not focus on the dollar amount, focus on the percentages. Um, this that's actually one thing I wish that Mexi did have here was instead of just the realized PL that you got the percentage profit here. Uh, that would be pretty cool uh, to, to be able to see that because I think that's way more important, uh, in my opinion. But so not too bad over these last trades. Uh, we've had five trades, five winners, and we're in the sixth, uh, sixth trade here. And so far it looks good. We'll see if we can get that that continuation lower. Um, and if we do, you know what I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do. You know now, you know I'll do it right here on the video. Let's actually separate the TP. Um, let's actually make this one here. I think this was the the lower one yes yeah so this is the lower one let's actually make this one the uh the, the the take profit at this lower fair value gap here so let's just do 1240 for now <clears throat> and then i'll move it on the chart here to make sure yeah so let's move this up right here okay so so pretty much right at this at the the low side of this lower fair value gap here is what uh what i'm going to be targeting and uh that should bank me in if we hit it so about two dollars and change not upset with that and that would close out one of the positions and then the other position i just i'll just move the stop loss to break even and then we'll see if we can get down to the lower target so you know that i think that's a good compromise <clears throat> um and uh yeah so that's it so far um as of right now our wallet balance is 115.54 and then our total equity that's including the unrealized PL here is 117.28 so this is uh up to change depending on how this trade goes um and then order history i think it, yeah so you can i'll just scroll down these so if you want to pause just to make sure i'm on the up and up <laughs> uh you'll see uh you know just how it's all i mean i think it's all there should be a lot of this stuff is canceled because it was limit orders that i closed out and then uh some of them are market orders some of them are limit orders filled and such and i believe the it's going backwards right yeah so the lower the lower uh the lower dates here and then it goes to the more recent is to, towards the top okay all right and then uh capital flow so Again, this is also one of the more unique things from XC. I've never seen Capital Flow like on this on this page. Normally, in other futures platforms, it'd be a much harder place. It's actually never really this clear either. It's much harder um, to figure out on other on other platforms. But here is uh yeah here is uh, the uh, Capital Flow. I actually got paid some funding, which is pretty nice. <laughs> um, and then. And it, this also gives you the p l i guess before the fees come out so this is that nine dollars and change but bef after uh, before the fees it was ten dollars and change so 
pretty good. So yeah, and that's uh, is that everything? Let me just make sure I didn't skip anything. I think that is everything. Yeah. Oh, this goes down pretty far. All right, and that's my original. My original deposit was just under eighty bucks, and the twenty dollars was the bonus. So. Yeah, guys, make sure to join through our referral link. Quick show. Make sure to join through our referral link with Mexi because you'll get a bonus as well. Plus, I'm doing a competition. Uh, if you're in the Discord, make sure to read the rules. You'll get an additional ten dollars if you can uh, uh, do those, uh, do the rules. You know, do 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 what's asked of you. Um, again, you don't have to do all three, but your chances of winning goes up dramatically. Dramatically, if you do all three, and that's on top of all the other benefits you get, like the you know the trading fees and everything being reduced. I think it's like a thirty percent uh, trading fee, um, you know, thirty uh, percent off on trading fees. So it's very very good. All right, that's uh, that's it for now. This was the third episode of the small account challenge. Um, hopefully, you guys are enjoying it. Again, uh, right now I'm just targeting two hundred dollars, uh, so I'm just targeting targeting to double the account. Um, once I get there, I maybe I'll do like a poll in the Discord um, to see if people want me to try and continue the small account challenge. I don't mind doing it. I do have it's fun, but uh, again, it's not like a, a priority. <laughs> but if people really want me to do it, then um, I, I'll continue it, and then uh, we'll try and get to another threshold. Whether that's gonna be four hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, we'll figure it out. Um, and yeah, and uh, if you like this content, make sure to like, subscribe. Maybe give my uh, my videos a share or two. I'd really, really appreciate it. Definitely leave me a comment so uh, you can let me know what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong. Um, I really, really value constructive criticism, and uh, I value a pat on the back as well. So give it to me. <laughs> and if you'd like to join any of my services, whether that's the Discord, which is free, or any of my trading services, which is you can find the details on that in the Patreon link in the description below. I do a swing trade service, I do a day trading service, and I also do a tutoring service. I really, really recommend the tutoring service. Um, I'm a, I'm a very good trader, and I have a lot of history, a lot of uh, a lot of experience. I've I've just passed a decade now this November in trading. Um, and uh, my Discord's as transparent as it can be with all my swing trades. So please check them out, especially if you want to learn how to trade profitably. All right, everyone. Remember, be patient, be vigilant, and be nimble. I love you guys. Take care. Bye.